Today, we're gonna make a thing. We're gonna make the PV Electronics Nixie Fun Clock. Have you ever wanted to get into electronics and either not had a project or not been able to do something because it scared you? Yeah, me too. Soldering is terrifying. One circuit board, two circuit board, bucket of parts, the case, four beautiful tubes. PV Electronics supplies a killer PDF set of instructions. Definitely read it all before you start. I read it like 17 times, and there's a couple drawbacks on this, but I've already got the solutions and we're gonna go over them as we run into them. Tools and equipment required as said by PV Electronics. I'm gonna link all of these in the description and they're gonna be nice and affordable versions of it. Sometimes you have to go down one or two pages on Amazon just to find the affordable version. It's kind of a scam. Soldering iron, wire cutters, wire strippers, multimeter, small flat screwdriver, solder. We got 44 individual sockets. They need to be placed. Insert the sockets from the side shown below. So we're just gonna drop them all in there. Finished. We got five spares. I'm gonna pop those right back in the parts bin. Place a flat object over the sockets, flip over the PCB, and solder the sockets in place as shown below. I have cut a piece of cardboard from the box and I will attempt this maneuver. I have successfully done it. We will be applying solder to all of these. You watched the how to solder video, right? You're just gonna wanna solder them. So it's, you're gonna heat them both up and let the solder flow right into them. And hopefully we don't set anything on fire. You know, I really do think I need something better than cardboard. The pins are moving around a lot and I don't wanna solder them inside real source or else I won't be able to push in my Nixie tubes. All right, I got this piece of wood. Wish me luck, wish me luck. Ugh, did it, got him. I am now going to hope that these pins do not wobble anymore when I try and solder them. They still do, of course they still do. I did it. Are we done yet? Are we done yet? No? We're just getting started? All right, let's do it. Low voltage power components. Move on to the other circuit board. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side and grab the main circuit board. Start by installing diode one through diode three. So I'm gonna find them right there. They've got little markings on the side. And what I also did is that I printed out the table of electronics components so I can go reference what they are. Diode one and diode three are the IN or 1N5819 and diode two is the 4004. And these little numbers are, if you look at the diode, they're right on the side there and you have to read them. I actually have a magnifying glass with a light on it that I like to go kind of peek through in my my old eyes and see what's going on. So I see an 819 on these two. So these are good. Then I gotta find the 4001. And I found it, it's right here. There is one other diode in here, I believe. Yes, which is a four zero zero four, which we will be using at a later date. Start by installing D1 through D3, align the white band on the components with band marked on the PCB. D1 and D3 are the 819s. Okay, and each of these diodes has a white band that will match the board as marked. So you can see that this band is gonna go right in here. The way to do this, you bend these like little legs and then stick them through. Oh, 
And you want to get them because we know that both of these circuit boards are going to be placed on top of one another. So we want to make sure that it's sitting pretty low to the ground here. And after it's in, bend those little legs out to the side so that it, it, it won't fall out when we turn it over. Diode 3 is also an 819, so we're going to find that over there and bend these legs like so. And the thing to note is that diode 1 and diode 3 are flipped, so you want to make sure that you have represented that when you put them in to make sure that all of the markings are good to go. Bend the legs. This is diode 2 which is a 4001. So we're gonna bend the legs, match up the line. Come on, come on, all right. And then we're going to bend those legs again. Two of these little capacitors that have 104 written on them. Just kidding. So my little capacitors say 104 on them. I'm not sure if that's a 100, so I'm going to look that up really quick. When I looked it up, I couldn't tell. There was conflicting information. So I'm going to solder them in, and if it doesn't work, this may be why. There's enough stuff on here now that I'm going to flip it over, solder, and snip some edges off so I have some more places. Well, I have some more stuff to work with. All right, going opposite hand for this one. Wish me luck. Whew. Close one. Now we're gonna take our wire cutters and snip off these legs. So you wanna snip them pretty much just as close as you possibly can to the bottom. And I usually try and grab them because these things will fly everywhere. And if you're in your living room, like I am, these do not feel good when you step on them. And J1 is on the other side of the board. So now that I'm still here, for something like this, I'm just gonna heat up just a little bit, just, in, just enough to tack it so I can flip it. Now I'm gonna fully solder this.
for a power connection like this, you want to get it nice and hot so that solder flows through the whole thing. All right, now we've come to a section where we're going to test. So we're going to plug in the power supply, already done that. And then we are going to, on a voltmeter, DC, touch the black probe on the ground test point to the red probe on the 5 volt test point. The voltage should measure between 5.5 and 5.8 volts. If not, disconnect the power and check your work. Do not proceed with assembly until this error is corrected. All right, so here's the plug. Let's juice it. All right, it's juiced. Trusty multimeter, let's see what's going on. All right, you wanna make sure you move the red pin over to volt. And DC is gonna be the black single line with the dotted line next to it. Uh, it looks like like that. Touch the black probe to the ground and the red probe to 5 volt. So we should be reading between 5.5 and 5.8. That's not good. I don't know what's up, but I'm not reading it. Ah, I'm missing one part. I see one. I was actually really sweating there. Uh, so I see one is 78LO5 5 voltage regulator. Wow. All right. So there are four different little things in here that look like this voltage regulator. Three of them are the same. They are a transistor, the A42 transistor. And one of them is not like the others. It is this 8LO5. It's this guy right here. So I'm going to unplug, always unplug. And then we're actually going to wait wait for our capacitors to discharge. You, you never know if there's anything even on these things. So this fuse is reading. It's discharging right now, but if I, I, did, I probably didn't want to solder it. It had about five volts in it for, for a little bit. I don't know much, but I do know that if you start messing with capacitors, you will get burned. All right, so here's this guy. We're gonna bend these legs a little bit just to get it in there and you want to make sure that you're going to follow they did a pv electronics did a really good job of giving you hints on how to put components into the board by making sure that the shape of it follows the shape of the actual component that is actually amazing. All right, this is ready to go, so we're gonna flip it over. I've gotten into a pretty bad habit of being conservative with my solder. That's not actually going through to the other side. So I need to reheat this one and do it over again. Now you get to see me use the soldering braid. So what you'll see here is I accidentally soldered these two pins together right there. So what I'm gonna do, the soldering braid, is it's literally just a bunch of cop copper and you just push your soldering iron into it and try and suck up that excess solder. So that's what we're gonna do right here. There it goes. And that looks like we did it. Yeah, we got it. That was really lucky. 
That'll teach me. All right, so we're gonna go for round two with the power, and hopefully this works. Now that our voltage regulator is there. Five volts, five volts, big money, big money. It's 4.67. What are we supposed to get? It's saying 5.5 and 5.8. We're gonna keep going. I've been waiting for this section. This is the where we start mounting the resistors to the board. The one flaw of the directions from PV Electronics doesn't specify which resistor is which. They have the color bands and they're a big pain to look up by themselves. So I've done that for you and I've made a chart that I'll link down in the description that lists out all the color bands and what they are. So you don't have to do that. Woo! And also resistors, unlike the diodes, can go either way, but I like putting them all uh, the same way for each of them, for each style, just because I think it looks cool. But that's just me. You don't have to do it that way. I do. So in this section, we're doing a couple resistors, the IRFD220 MOSFET chip, which, and then we're doing a, a diode, a couple more capacitors, and an inducer, and also the socket for our first uh, integrated circuit. So the one, one interesting thing is about the MOSFET is that it looks very, very similar to four other units in this board, the only way to tell it apart, besides reading it, which let me tell you is pretty hard, is that the pins on one side are connected, where on the other ones it is not. So you can see them both right here. And this is the one that we're going to be soldering. This is Q1. This is something that we're going to be soldering later. So let's pop her in, bend these legs a little bit. D4, that is a diode. I've only got one left. We're just gonna make sure D4 is the UM, UF404. 404, and we've, as with all diodes, we need to make sure that it is going the right way with the line. C3, the one UF capacitor. Okay, this is the one UF capacitor. And I believe this is, uh, this is C3. And so these capacitors have a white line going down right here, and that, that's marked on the, on the board. So when you put them in, you wanna make sure that you're lining up the white line with the side that it says on the board. Looks like they're gonna want us to lay it down, so that is what we will do. Shabam. And so, C4, L, and L1 are soldered on the other side of the board, so we're not gonna do it right now. We're, we're gonna do those after we finish soldering all of these pins for this side. All right, so we've got our, got our integrated circuit board here, that, or the socket for it, and 
There's a little notch right here that we're going to be using. The notch is right there. Boom. So before we do any of the things that are not going to fall out, I'm just going to drop a little bit of solder on the legs that can't be bent. So now none of these can fall out. And I guess I'm just going to finish up because I'm already here. All right, and the last two pieces of this are gonna be on the other side of the board. So we'll flip it over and find them, C4 and inductor. And there's a note here in the instructions that there are actually three types of inductors. And if you have the type with the longer wire, you're gonna to wanna to bend that over so it fits. If you just have the, the type like I have, or there is a shorter, there's a shorter type, you can just, uh, leave it in like like so c4 220 uf yep it's a white line right there it's gonna go towards towards us I had already soldered those. Wait, no, I hadn't. I'm getting tired. Yeah, I guess I thought that because they were short, I had already cut them off. Yeah, these are looking better. All right, let's cut, a, let's cut the legs off this capacitor. R1, R3, R2, Q1 with the join pins being going to the join pins note. D4 right here, C3, C3 and C4, which is on the bottom, and L1, which is on the bottom, and the socket for IC2. Done. Now it's telling us that we're gonna do the high voltage system test. And this is really important, and I'm gonna read out the warning to you from page four. The clock PCB includes a switch mode voltage booster circuit. This generates a nominally 100 volts DC, but is capable of generating 300 volts before adjustment. So we basically, this is saying uh, voltages generated by the circuit can give a potentially lethal electric shock. Yeah, that's kind of, that's some heavy hitting stuff right there. So let's go back and let's read these instructions really, really thoroughly before we plug anything in. Refer to the warnings. On page four, insert IC2 into its socket, orient the notch of the IC with the notch of the IC socket on the PCB marking. Power up the PCB using the ground and 170 volt test points, measure the high voltage generated. It should read between 167 and 173. Disconnect the power supply. Finally, remove the IC2 from its socket and replace it on its static protective foam. If you do not get this voltage, blah, 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 blah. Don't. Okay, so yeah, if you don't get the voltage, you done screwed up. So I'm gonna test this very carefully. We're gonna slot in IC2, making sure to line up the notch with the notch. Oh, I got it. The circuit board is in, I lined up the notch to the notch. Once again, if I die, 
It was nice knowing you. All right, so we're powered up. I'm gonna get out my trusty multimeter. Round 170. All right, we're reading 140. What am I supposed to be reading? Uh, it says 167 and 173. The power supply only read about 10 volts when it was supposed to read 12, so I'm just gonna go with this. It could be wrong, but I'm just doing this for fun. So I think we're good so far, so I'm gonna press on. I'm gonna unplug this, and then we're gonna take out this integrated circuit carefully. Do I, I don't know how to do this carefully. There it is. All right, we've passed the high voltage test. Danger, danger, high voltage. Moving on, Nixie driver, this is the fun stuff. So orient the notch of the IC body with the notch of the PCB marking and solder in place. Note that there is no socket used. All right, we got it. From what I read, you do not want to be leaving your soldering iron on an integrated circuit pin for too long, because that could hurt it. So now that we have uh, finished soldering this board on in, check all those joints. They're all looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. So we are now done with this board for the time being. And we will now con continue with the first board that we started soldering. So we're doing Q2 through 5, which is, which are the transistors. They are, they have sweet names. They are the EL817 octocouplers. So that's actually amazing. And they have a little dot in them that is indicated, the orientation is indicated on the board. So you can see that there is this dot up there in the corner, hopefully, and it will correspond to the dot on the board. Just dab a little bit of solder on these so it doesn't come out. So now they won't come out when I flip it over to solder the rest of them on. So now we're gonna do some more resistors. Remember, down in the description, I have a chart that lists out the bands of colors on the resistors and what they actually correspond to on the bill of materials from this kit. Very important. Our six through nine is the 1K or the 1.1. Boom, got them all right here. I just wrote down what each of these were after I calculated them from the online calculator. But like I said, I have a chart in the description that has all this for you. This was the most annoying part of this entire build was figuring out what resistors were what. All right, now that we got all these in, I'm gonna toss them over and give them the torch. Let's check it out. All right, we're ready for our board connector. There's four connectors total. We'll line them up for you right here. There's the male and female connectors. So we're going to slide them together with the longer pins going in, kind of like this. Place the connectors into the main component PCB with the male connector in this PCB so that when you place the tube PCB over the top, the female connectors go into the holes of the tube PCB. And then we need to make NX4 and J4, our component markings are on the same side of the stack, which are 
top right. Otherwise, our tubes will be upside down. Oh, no. Okay, so we're running into a little interference here with the fuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend it over a little bit. I ran into some interference with this piece right here. So like I said, I bent it over, and hopefully it's going to solve the problem. It's not touching anything else. There's no more interference. So I'm going to solder these four. I'm going to solder four pins. It's nice and true to itself. And then I'm going to turn it over and solder the four on the bottom side. But I'm shimming it with just some random tools that I had here just to make sure that it's plumb and not falling over. Ding! Done! Our Nixie board is almost assembled. We'll put that one off to the side. All right, X1. That is this cylindrical watch crystal. Do not solder the body of the crystal to the PCB. Just lay it down. Like so. Done. C5. That's the 15 PF capacitor. C6, 33, says it right here. R4, R5, R14, and R15. I love getting components on the board and done. It's like they're running out of space here on this thing. There seems to be some kind of obstruction on the other side of this. Let's see what I did. Oh, there's some solder right there. So this is going to be a good opportunity to use our braid. Hopefully that did the trick. And we got him. All right, now we're uh, down to our 18 and 19, which are the 270s. It's time to solder. That's a lot. But we're going to get through it. Now let's check them out. We are literally in the home stretch here. Q6 through Q8. Those are going to be the three transistors that are left. The one that's, they all look like that voltage regulator, but they're not. They're dirty liars. And so they're all the same. All right, so we have made sure that the rounded bodies have matched the PCB. Now we're gonna solder. Okay, now we're gonna do the four LEDs. So these are a little bit going to be a little bit tricky because they have a slot here, but we also need to make sure that they are sitting right in their designated area so they can provide the really awesome backlight for those Nixie tubes. The long lead goes into the hole marked positive, put each LED loosely into its holes and place the tube. PCB into position. Now you can push each LED into the matching small hole, the tube PCB. So we need to put each LED into place loosely. That is what we will do with the long leg going into positive, of course. Now we're gonna put our PCB on there. Maybe we're gonna make sure to line up J4 and N4. So now we look for the C7, which is the 100 NF. That's labeled 104. I will I will include that in my resistor document that those four capacitors are labeled 104 in my kit. The 100 
NF capacitors. This little guy right here is the 0.22F or 0.1F. I have the 0.22F. And it's got arrows that are gonna match the arrows on the board. So we will plug it in, it needs a directional. And it needs to go as far down on the board as possible. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little dab on here. So now when I turn it over to solder it the rest of the way, we'll be good. All right, so now we're doing the set and adjust buttons. If I look into the bag that came with the case, there they are. <laughs> I'm not tired at all. I'm like, what is that noise? Oh, I'm just pushing the button with the, by putting my weight on it. All right, so now we're doing the neon tubes. Small pieces of the clear insulation provided on the leads of the two neon pieces to prevent shorts. All right, so we're attaching this last piece of neon to this clock. And as soon as we're done with that, it says we're ready to power it up. I'm so freaking excited. But it knows I'm almost done. It doesn't want me to go. I'm going to solder the second one because I didn't have it in the frame for the first time. All right. Okay. And then we need R16 and 17. These two 390 resistors. And I'm seeing one capacitor that I is that's still in my bin here. And I'm gonna check this board very, very thoroughly to make sure that it is not needed anywhere because that would be kind of funny. I would also cry a little bit. All right, these are the last two. We've made it. Tube test. The clock is now ready for final powering up. Before I do that, I'm gonna make sure, because I still have this little uh, UN100, 100, NF capacitor right there that I have not soldered onto any board yet. So let's check these really carefully. I think it's good. Insert the four tubes, then assemble the two PCBs together, ensuring the four LEDs go into the holes into the tube PCB. Ah, uh, yes, I took that apart. And one thing that I saw while I was doing research for this, yes, yes, I watched maybe one or two videos before I put this together was that one of the people actually forgot to put this to put this PCB or this uh this IC back in. We took this out during the voltage test of the Nixie tube. We put it in then we took it out. So remember to put this thing back in. Yeah, the instructions definitely do not say to put this thing back in. So, we will be doing that. The tubes in, make sure the numbers are aligned correctly, yes. And you can see the six. You know what I did? I have put these buttons, I believe, on the wrong side. These buttons right here, I think they're supposed to come out the back because I can't put, I can't put these boards together right now like this. Boo, okay. So this is gonna be a great test of my soldering braid to see if I can suck the solder out of those holes enough that I can pull it out, pull these things out. That's a bummer. Everything was going so well. I'm actually really frustrated right now. <laughs> Everything was going so well. I'm so close. Got one out. Remember kids, don't solder tired. It's gonna be even more painful getting them back in there. Okay, take two, hopefully the final take. We're working with botched buttons now. All right, so 
we're back on track. We got the button set going out the back. Finally, we're gonna finish this thing. Where's the solder? So remember, if you get the copper or aluminum case, the buttons go on the back side of the main PCB board. Not the front side where it looks like they're supposed to go, but the back side. Where were we 45 minutes ago when we left off? Oh yeah, we were putting it together to test the final assembly. So now that I've gotten these switches on the back, on the back, we can put this together now. We'll make sure all the LEDs are going in the right places. I believe that they are. So these should start cycling. If everything goes correctly, power the PCB, Take great care not to touch the live parts of the PCB. You know, this, this is the time when I get shocked and I'm dead. <gasps> What's happening? I can't even see. Okay, so two of my tubes are upside down. Okay, so now that I've plugged this in and it like mostly works, I have to be really, really careful because there's still charge in this thing. trying really hard to not break it as I pull it out. Okay. So these are back. Well, carefully plug this back in. We are gonna hope that everything lights up as it should. And if it does, we should be seeing, if all is well, the tube should count zero, one, two, all the way to nine repeatedly. Pressing the set button will exit the tube test and the clock will start showing the time. So, here it goes. All right, I see them all on. It says 12.03. It says 12.03. Maybe I press the set button. I'm gonna plug it in one more time Hopefully not shock myself. I was getting a little shock there. This is totally working right now. I don't want to touch it anymore because it hurts when I touch the live stuff. So I'm going to unplug it and we're going to build the case. Okay, so to assemble the case, we need to separate the two PCBs again. Put the driver PCB away. Then place the tube PCB and Place the four 11 mil spacers loosely over the four holes of the rear cover. I don't need to throw those, so these aren't the washers. Okay. I don't need to use the washers, just the studs for now. I see what you're doing. Okay, so we need to put, basically we're assembling this and then we're gonna shove it up into the top now I need to find something that's narrow enough to pass under the case body. Neil deGrasse Tyson, you always served us well. I'm trying to find something that will work. The pasta has failed me. Come on, please, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. All right, so we're good to go here. This is in. Thank you, tea candles. So now I'm gonna tighten these somehow. Oh yeah, this is the life. That not prepared life. But so it goes in the world of cheap. Oh, I made my finger smaller. Uh -huh. Okay. Attach the driver PC board. So now we're going to place this in a position and we will, as best we can, ensure that the LEDs go straight down. Yeah, the next time I tell myself I'm going to get that dope 
steampunk case. No. I think I'm good. But I can't really see. That washer is gone. Neil deGrasse Tyson sacrificed that washer for, for science. It did say pliers will suffice. So that's what I'm doing. All right. Laser etched cover coming off. All right, just peeling off the fun clock. Then I'm done. I love that you have to have a tool to get to the tools. All right, we're done. Here it is. It's looking awesome. It's powered up. Last try. I'm not going to shock myself this time. Kaboom. This is sick. All right. And we're going to press the set button and it's going to pop out. Boom. 12 o'clock. And so if you go on the instructions page, it actually has a huge amount of menu functions. And please check those out. Because if you're right here, you're done. This is working. We built the thing!